Hey, Tim Sykes here. Happy Memorial Day. The stock market is closed in observance of Memorial Day, and I have to give a shout out to all the brave men and women who have sacrificed so much uh, for our great country. But for me, I want to teach um, and what I can do. You know, I'm not good at really fighting, so I'm good at teaching. And I can give this Memorial Day sale um, with 30, 40, 50, 60% off uh, different guides, different newsletters. I'll post the link just below this video. It'll last just for a few days, but you can save big. And I encourage you to study. So if I can give you these savings and it inspires you to study harder, I've done my job. Um, Penny Stocking Framework Part 2. Uh, this is still 50% off. This is the last time it'll be 50% off. Okay. I had it as a pre sale while I was working on it. I'm sorry it took me forever to finish it. Um, but guess what? It's done now. 10 plus hours. Trading tickers is a must watch. And how to make millions is a must watch. These three, I think, would be the best. But watch everything, okay? The more that you study, the better prepared you are, the better your odds of success. Um, I want to talk about low price stocks in this uh, video. I think a lot of you guys are focusing on the wrong patterns, the wrong stocks, the wrong strategies for your small accounts. Um, I see that there are a lot of you know big short sellers who you know they make 10, 20, 30, 50, hundred thousand dollars in a day and it looks so amazing. But they're also betting 200, 300, 500 thousand um, dollars and you can't afford to do that. Not to mention a lot of these screenshot heroes show a few screenshots. They wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare show all of their trades because then you would see the massive losses and them blowing up over and over and over again. Um, for you guys with small accounts and girls with small accounts, focus on low price stocks. Um, I know there's a whole group of people where they're like, you should never buy any penny stock. They're all scams. Shut the fuck up, okay? Because these small stocks, whether they do well in the long run or not as a company, most companies fail, most stocks will go to zero, you can utilize them when they are spiking pretty big. Um, like my SNES, for example. I was buying this on a train ride the other day. On a train. I filmed this for Instagram and Facebook. You can see the video of me trading this live. Um, buying it in the 40s, low 40s, selling it in the 60s, making 30% of my money. It was a good gain inside of, what, a half hour, inside of an hour. Uh, when the Wi-Fi is going on and off, and I will bring up when I'm trading on crappy Wi-Fi because that influences my trade. I'm not making an excuse. Um, that is, frankly, something that you have to consider. If you're trading from a train or a plane or a bus, or if you're trying to fit in a trade into your work or school, you know, be more conservative. It's not a bad thing. Um, but long story short, I focus on this stock because they had news. They had already spiked, okay? I want you to get used to buying stocks that are already spiking big and holding near their highs. This stock, near the market open, was already in the 50s, and it dipped to the 40s where I bought it. In the 40s, it was still up, mind you, 50% on the day, okay? This was at 32 cents the previous day, but they're a pest control company, California, uh, didn't even give them, you know, uh, like a big contract or anything. They just proposed changing the regulations that could benefit this company. And the stock has skyrocketed ever since. Um, but I recognize the stock was holding near its highs. I recognize the big volume. That's another thing. A lot of you guys bring up stocks in the chat room like there's just no volume. There's no movement. There's no volume. There's no catalyst. And you're like, should I buy it? No. Okay, you need to understand that you need things that can move the stock higher. Did I know that the stock was going to go from 40 cents to a dollar 90? I did not know. Okay, I didn't I never know that the stock is going to quintuple. This was the strongest stock in the market. I just knew that the stock had a catalyst, big volume, and it was holding near its high. So the whole question was, could it take out those pre-market highs around 53? And sure enough it did. I am very fine with my buy and my sell because I made roughly 30%. And let me just show you my trade. Um, where was it? Uh, I, I have a whole bunch of little trades too, by the way. There's a whole group of people where they're like, Tim, you're a multimillionaire. Don't you ever get sick of making like $100 or $200 or $1,000? Don't you want to bet big? And the answer is no. I take pride in trading with a small account to show you guys 
how to trade with a small account. Um, where was it? Here it was. I made 23.84. Um, I had another stock, so roughly 2,500 on the day. FUSZ was another, uh, you know, kind of junker stock. I don't mind buying these junkers. They're carcasses of companies. Okay, FUSZ is laughable. If you look at my Twitter, I've been arguing with these bag holders, or maybe they're the promoters. I don't even know. But this has one been one of the strongest stocks in the past few months, and I've been trying to dip by it. Unfortunately, the volume is fading and the promoters just fucking suck. So um, FUSZ people, stop battling me on Twitter and talk to your promoters. Tell them to stop doing so much coke and become more useful. Pump it up. Get some press release about Oracle. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit this stock higher. Um, but the lower volume and the lower lows, that's not going to do it. SNES, I mean, it's up a lot, so it deserves to come down a little bit, but they put out a damn good press release, and that got the volume spiking. Uh, AXXA is another low price stock I'm getting a lot of questions about. I mean, this thing went from a sub penny, like under a penny a share, to over 30 cents a share. Okay, this is a fantastic run up, and yes, it comes straight back down. So, some people were like, Well, it's straight back down, it should never have been bought. Who cares what a stock does eventually? Why not focus on what a stock can do for your small account? Let me show you my AXXA trade. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't know, something in my throat. Um, where was it? AXXA. I've actually traded a few times. This was my $1,500 profit. That was nice. Well, I'll start with this. It's good for you to see what really works with a small account and small dollar amount, okay? I'm not going to make 50 grand in a day on this, but I can make 1500 And this was a nice little 20% gain, and I didn't even time it right. I bought it right here on the close of the first green day. Oh, wait, that, that was this one. First green day. This time I actually had it too, but I... As you'll hear, I kind of screwed that up. But this was the first green day after it had based. And guess what? Even though it didn't finish that strongly, it nearly touched six cents the next day. Okay? I locked in profits a little too soon. I made 20, 22%. And later in the day, it was at over five. So this could have been a 30, 40% winner. Now, on the chart, this looks like a blip. But if you can make 20, 30, 40%, that's fantastic, especially if you have a $2,000 account, right? If you can make $200, $300, $400 in a day on a $2,000 account, there is no better strategy in the world because you are risking very little. You know, the stock is already based. And frankly, if you hold it overnight, you're not even using a day trade. So the pattern day trader rule doesn't matter. And because the first green day on these OTC plays are usually very good. Now, let me show you about this first one. So this first green day actually was an even bigger spike. Um, you know, it closed at around four cents. The next morning, it gapped to over six. This was like a 50, 60% winner overnight. And how did I do? Let me just show you my trade. Because again, I like showing all my trades. It's the difference between me and a lot of these fakes in this industry. Um, where was it? <laughs> Really, I've seen so many fakes these days. They just post like one screenshot or two screenshots. Look, I'm a millionaire. Look, I've made millions of dollars. Show me every trade, you lying sacks of shit. I'm not bitter. Just trying to help you guys. Anyways, AXXA, um, I was buying this on a late day dip on the first green day, but I said also probable first green day. Not sure if I'll hold overnight. Um, and I said, no, it's not closing strong, so I'm out. And I was over trading the past few days. So I got out for a small profit. But let me just do some math because some people aren't good at math. So they see me buying 200,000 shares. They're like, wow, 200,000 shares. One day I hope to trade that much and put that kind of money involved in here. This is $8,000, okay? I'm trading as small as I can. Remember, I am a multimillionaire, and I bring that up not to brag, but to show you how small I actually trade. When some people are like, you're not making big money anymore. I trade with a small account in order to teach. Anyways, I got out of this. I still made a little money, but frankly, overnight, over the weekend, this was a 50, 60% winner, and I made 2%. So I underestimated it, but 
to be fair, it was not closing strong. So I don't regret that. Um, but I learned from it. And that's what made me hold it overnight the next night. The, the next time it was closing decently strong, but it wasn't closing hugely strong. But I remembered from this time when I played it a little too safe. And guess what? I collected my 20% which still was only half of the potential profits. But at least here, I mean, I could have made 60%, so I collected 1 30th of the potential profits. This is what I want you guys starting to do. Start looking at different strategies. And whether you're not, you trade it well, or you profit or not, or maybe you miss the trade, or maybe you screw it up, look how the trade would have done. And that way you can start to adapt. Oh, wait a minute, this pattern is working again and again and again. So any one trade doesn't begin to matter. It's more about the process and refining your process over time. I know that's not exciting. It's not sexy, but that's what it takes to become a millionaire. And don't let this small blip on this chart fool you. This is a 60% overnight winner. This is a 20 to 40% winner, depending on when you sold. So even though these low price stocks don't look that exciting, if you focus on this pattern, first green day on OTCs, guess what? You can grow your account substantially, especially if you have a small account. And it might not get the big headlines of a fifty dollars or $100,000 day, but I'm using a pittance of money. I'm using such a small amount of money to make these trades. Let me tell you about the trade that I'm long right now overnight, over the weekend, the holiday weekend on KBLB. Big, massive volume coming up right against its highs at seven cents. Will it break seven cents? I don't know. I do encourage you to look for dips. You do not want to just buy stocks randomly and at random prices, because guess what? If you do buy this at seven, what if it tops? You know, if it tops very quickly, it could go back down to six and a half or even six. So I was very happy on Friday to buy this twice in the low sixes. Um, on dips, especially into the close. But the volume was massive and it's closing high. And from what I hear, it's also being promoted. Um, so the promoters are doing a good job. Again, in these environments right now, promoters are irrelevant to me. They've all kind of gone underground. They share different email lists. You know, I would never say, hey, I need to follow this one promoter. But I do recognize when a promoter is doing their job. Hey, FUSZ bag holders, you should probably call up the KBLB promoters and be like, yo, get on, I uh, get on my stock, please. KBLB, eh, I mean, it's good, but get on FUSZ. That's what I would do. And frankly, I want FUSZ to go higher. I've been dip buying it several times and it hasn't done shit. KBLB, I dip bought it and it is fantastic. Um, for those of you who don't remember, several years ago, I guess what? seven, eight, eight years ago. Holy crap. Back in 2010, this thing went supernova um, from a penny up to 30 cents, roughly. Big volume, 50 million shares in a day. And recently in 2016, it also went from a penny up to 10 cents. So again, this doesn't look like that much on the chart, but this is 10 times your money in a few days. And the volume got up to like 20 million shares in a day. Now it's back and you can see the volume is spiking again. So I want you to start looking at big percent gainers. This was a 30% winner um, on Friday. I was buying it when it was like a 20% winner. Um, but they have this technology called spider silk. I get a kick out of it every time. I just think of like Spider-Man with these little spiders weaving this genetically modified um, fabric that supposedly makes strong silk. It's probably a pipe dream. It'll probably fail. But for me, I don't care about the long-term value of this company. I'm playing the momentum. I'm playing the idiots who believe in this spider silk. No different than the idiots who believe in FUSZ. The problem with FUSZ is that it can't bounce. KBLB is having record volume literally in the past year, year and a half, and the promoters are promoting it. And so, you know, we'll see. If I was a promoter on this stock or involved in this company, I would put out a press release on Tuesday. And that way you could ensure the breakout to keep going. I don't know how far this can go. You know, like I said, it very well could easily fail at seven cents. Um, but if it keeps going, guess what? I'm in, in the low sixes. I'll probably sell in the eights or the nines. I'm not saying this is going to a dollar. I want you to focus 
on you know high odds setups. So when you have a stock with promoters, with massive volume compared to recent volume and a potential breakout, guess what? This is a good setup. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to break out, but there's too many traders who look later. They'd say, you know, this will this might pop up on people's radars on Tuesday, traders' radars, if it breaks seven. Because then they'll say, oh, now it's a multi-week breakout. And it'll pop up on their little scanners if it gets to, let's say, seven and a half. And that will bring in a whole bunch of technical buyers where they just like buying technical breakouts. And guess what? The problem with penny stocks is that technical breakouts don't always hold. Okay, sometimes you get a technical breakout and it's not really convincing and it turns out to be a double top. Uh, BLNK was a good example of this on Friday. You know, this thing has spiked up quite nicely, frustrating a lot of short sellers. You know that there's still a lot of short sellers in this because this thing is up from the ones to the sevens and a lot of short sellers just short anything thinking that they're all going to go back down to zero. It doesn't matter you know, what news they have. H-E-A-R has screwed so many short sellers, it's crazy. But let me talk about BLNK for a second because I was buying this late Friday on this breakout, okay? I thought that this was gonna be a late day short squeeze. This was gonna be fantastic. The stock went red to green on the day, which is very tough to do. And guess what? Broke the morning high and went pretty much nowhere after that. Um, so it broke the morning high by like 10 cents. So just because a penny stock or a heavily shorted stock creates a breakout, you don't know if it's going to continue. Now, BLNK, maybe it's just premature. Um, you know, they had some some nasty financing news that dropped the stock a dollar. So, you know, just the fact that it even, you know, got back to seven is impressive. So maybe Tuesday is the breakout day. And I'll be watching for you know, a, a possible morning spike like this. Maybe they'll put out another press release. They've been putting out a lot of PRs and hyping themselves up. So that's what I want you guys to start thinking of. Look for the PRs, look for the big volume, look for the promotions, look for the big percent gains because these things can go further than you think and further than the shorts think. You know, I don't think there's any shorts in KBLB because it's just too you know low price. They're not gonna short such a low price stock and it's right at this key level. So if it does break seven cents, you know, look at it over different time frames. If it breaks seven cents, I mean, this thing could go to 10 cents. It could go to 20 cents if it has the right press release. There's long-term resistance at 8.7 and 9.8. But if the volume continues this much, it could blow right through that. Do I know what's gonna happen? The answer is no. But I put myself in a position where even if it fails at seven, guess what? I'll sell it at seven or I'll sell it at six and a half and take a small game. Or if I'm right that this volume burst does mean something, that maybe the promoters are gonna promote it more, maybe there will be a press release, I don't know. I don't want you to think like, oh, I have inside information. I know there's gonna be a press release. Fuck if I know, you know? They might, the promoters might have a press release scheduled and by my releasing this video, they're gonna be like, fuck sykes, we're not gonna issue the press release. That could happen too. That's the gift and the curse of me being fully transparent. Um, all I know is that I want you, especially if you have a small account, to start trading more of these stocks from the long side. And even if they don't look impressive from a fundamental standpoint, which none of these companies do, understand that it's not fundamentals that are driving this. It's newbie morons who believe in these companies' technologies and their products, and they believe the promoters. It's newbie morons who buy technical breakouts and they think that it's gonna go up to a dollar. And you can take advantage of these newbie morons by simply knowing the patterns better and being prepared and being ready to strike. I had no idea that SNES, sorry, this is a two-year chart. It's a terrible two-year chart. But I had no idea that SNES was gonna quintuple from my buy. The news was good, it wasn't like groundbreaking. So when I take my 30% profits, that's near best case scenario for me. You'll see I make a lot of five, 10, 15, 20, 30% and I lose or win a lot of the time where I win or lose maybe 5% and it's a scratch. But these are the plays where I made 30% and I totally underestimated this thing. Over the next 24 hours from my sell, this thing tripled. 
okay? AXXA, when I made my 20% uh, here, guess what? Oh, this one was good. When I made my 2% here, I could have made 60%, okay? So by focusing on good patterns and setups, sometimes you're gonna underestimate it. That doesn't mean that you should get angry or discouraged. I get encouraged. When a stock goes up 60% and I sell too soon, I say to myself, whoa, I was really dead on there. Let me see and wait for another first green day. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And I still underestimated it, but at least I captured a bigger percentage. FUSZ, I mean, I've tried to dip by this several times. Look at this. First green day right here I tried. Even though it finished red on the day, it still went up to nearly a buck 80 from the buck 50. So it did have a little spike up. Um, even though it finished lower. Here you have two green days in a row. Here you have two green days in a row. So a lot of these pumps, a lot of these OTC plays, when they just get a little bit of momentum, um, and especially a volume spike. You see, this first green day was not a volume spike. I think it was just sellers just got exhausted, so it didn't lead to that much of a bounce. Here, again, sellers are a little exhausted. Maybe some people could say that this was a double bottom, and you got a nice second green day. I mean, this one... Close at a buck twenty, goes all the way up to a buck sixty. I mean, this is a thirty percent gain. This doesn't look like much on the chart again because these stocks are up and down so much. But if you can make thirty percent here, that's fantastic. And here, I mean, this was I was actually mocking the promoters. This is how I know there are promoters in this stock too. Um, a, my students and I have posted the email promos. So anybody who says that this is not a pump. I mean, you, you've you seen the email promos that we've posted. I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I guess denial is a very long river uh, in Egypt. But there were email promos. And I was making fun of the, the stock here in the 70s. And I think that the promoters saw that um, because literally right when I tweeted, like, making fun of, like, the new low, um, they started spiking it right here. So good job, promoters. I'm glad I could rile you up into doing your fucking jobs. Um, but now it's right back near its lows again. So hopefully somebody who's involved with the FUSZ pump can send this to the promoters. Um, you know, maybe they can clean up the promoters from their, their probable, um, you know, rehab stint that they're in. Or maybe they're not even in rehab. Maybe they're, they're in the middle of a coke binge or something. But no matter how you slice it, they're not doing their jobs. And the KBLB promoters are. So good job, KBLB promoters. Bad job, FUSZ promoters. Um, and I, I say all of this stuff jokingly, but half jokingly. Like seriously, it, you have to go where the volume is. You have to go where the momentum is with these stocks. They're all rubbish. They are all trash. Um, they'll all end up at zero or close to it in the coming months and years. And if you don't believe me, go back and look through 5,500 plus video lessons. Go back and look through literally thousands of pumps that I've cataloged over the years. They all end the same. Um, it's staggering. So whatever anybody says, they're ignoring history. They're ignoring stats. And that's, you know, that's their right. But this is why most people lose half 75, maybe even 90, even 100% of their money on these penny stocks by believing them. So I want to be very, very clear. I do not believe in KBLB right now. But I am long because I think that it's being promoted. I think it can spike more. How much more? I don't know. If they're going to have a press release, I don't know. But this is momentum. SNES was a better play because there's definitely news. I didn't have to guess the news ahead of time. Um, the news was already out. The stock was already up 50% before I bought. I simply recognized that it was holding near its highs and had a chance to break out further. And sure enough, it did. AXXA, two trades. I'm just recapping real quick. Two trades. I lost my nerve this time and I only made like 2% when I could have made 60%. Second time on the green day, I did better and I made 20%, but I still could have made 30 to 40%. So I don't mind underestimating. I don't mind selling too soon. Um, what will I do with KBLB? I know I'm going to get a ton of questions after this video. I don't know. We're going to see if there's 
promoter emails and text messages that are still going out over the weekend. We're going to see if there's a press release. We're going to see how it acts at this key resistance level of seven. And guess what? You can get out of stocks anytime. When in doubt, get out. You can always buy back in later that day or the next day too. A lot of you guys get too focused on, you know, is this company going to succeed? Is this stock going to go up? It's not just about what the company does. It's not just about what the stock does over time. It's how can you grow your small account? Use these stocks to play the momentum and try to make 10, 20, 30, 40%. Whether you have a $2,000 account or a $5,000 account or a $10,000 account. These are the stocks to focus on. That's today's lesson. Leave a comment underneath this video. Let me know if you understand what I'm talking about because I know this is kind of crazy to say penny stocks can be good when they're you know in play, but they can be. And if you want any more research, then please do take me up on this Memorial Day sale. Um, you know, Penny Stocking Framework Part 2, um, Trading Tickers and How to Make Millions. These three guides are must watches as soon as possible. And I'll see you guys in the chat room on Tuesday. We got a busy week. I'll also send a watch list later today.